want to thank Suzanne for uh, inviting me to speak to you today. My name is John O'Rourke. Company name is Good Energy. Uh, we've worked with the town of Hadley now for a number of years to put this program together. This is a community electricity aggregation. Essentially what that means is that the town has said we'd like to, to um, aggregate the load of all our residents and businesses who are on the basic service with Eversource and to go out to a competitive bid with national suppliers and see if we can get a lower rate than uh, Eversource will give us. Okay, that's one of the objectives of this. Uh, what I'd like to do is just run through this presentation uh, and then I'll open it up for questions. All right. Uh, some of you may have seen an article in the Gazette that appeared on Saturday that talked about this program. As I said, we've been working with the town now for at least three years to put this into place. Did everybody receive one of these letters? No. No? no. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you more about that later. But this is the customer notification letter that went out to all residents who are on the basic service of uh, Eversource. Okay, so if you didn't get one of these, I'll explain that later. All right, what is community electricity aggregation? Essentially, you're, what you're doing is you're forming a buying group to go out to bid collectively. It's just, you know, it's, it's just like you know, many of you probably belong to Costco or BJ's or Sam's or some other buying group. This is what it's about. It's just putting the loads together for all the residents and businesses on the basic service of Eversource and going out to a competitive bid. In Massachusetts, uh, this is how uh, municipal aggregation or commuter electricity aggregation has grown. You can see it remained somewhat steady since 2000 when it was first initiated and then uh, Good Energy came into the market in 2014 and uh, we woke up the competition and you can see how uh, things have gone and the number of households right now uh, in aggregations is uh, substantial. <coughs> This is just some graphical information about the Eversource uh, residential basic service here in Western Massachusetts. You can see by that trend line that prices have uh, steadily moved up in the last 10 years. Uh, and because of other factors in the Commonwealth, they're expected to remain uh, on, the, on the incline. My company, Good Energy, is a national company. We're involved in every state uh, that has municipal aggregation. Uh, we're the leader in the country in this product. We're also the leader here in Massachusetts. Right now, we have 41 active aggregations. Uh, we have one pending a bid, which will go out probably in the next couple of weeks. And we have a couple more that are going through the uh, process with the Department of Energy Resources and the Department of Public Utilities. One thing um, you need to know, the town didn't do this on its own. Okay, everything the town did, everything we did, had to be approved by the Department of Energy Resources and the Department of Public Utilities. Uh, that process for Hadley uh, took about a year to get through that regulatory process. <coughs> what happens is that they look at the plan that we put together, um, and essentially right now, there are about 147 municipalities in the Commonwealth out of, 100 and, uh, out of 304 that are eligible to become aggregated, almost half, okay, they all have uh, approved aggregation plans. So essentially, you know, you're not alone in this, Hadley's not alone, many, many communities are doing this, both Boston and Worcester who are the two largest municipalities in the Commonwealth, are now moving toward uh, aggregating the loads of their residents. So you're in good company. Can you 
If you're in the program, you can leave the program at any time without penalty or termination fees. All right, I'm sure that some of you have gotten uh, offers from on the phone or by mail from companies. Um, some are, are, are scrupulous, some are not. Uh, and some of them have tremendous uh, penalties and uh, termination fees if you want to get out of their program. Customers continue to receive one bill from and make payments to every source that will continue to respond to emergencies and outages. I'll show you a little later uh, the Eversource bill and the only thing that changes on the bill is the name of the supplier. Okay. Reliability and quality of service by Eversource will remain the same, however that may be. <laughs> I'm going to go through some frequently asked questions that you probably all have on your mind. Okay, and again, uh, I already mentioned this, uh, what an aggregation is, it's, a, it's simply a buying group, okay? Uh, and everybody understands that concept of, of bulky, bulk buying to lower unit price. The goals of uh, aggregation first, longer term uh, electricity price stability. You know that your Eversource rates change every six months, they bounce up and down. Uh, what this does is give you a stable rate for a longer period of time. For Hadley, uh, we had to do something a little bit more creative because we started the program here in July rather than uh, in the fall when we usually start programs. We did what's known as a step where we did a four month price and then it steps up for the rest of the contract. And this is uh, a contract that goes until it's a 27 month contract so essentially it starts out with four months at uh, nine seven four six uh, and then it goes up to ten one after uh, those first four months so August is the start we're in the we're in the period now that's called the opt-out period you go through this period and you get a choice of either staying in the program or not as of August meter read, everybody who wants to be in the program gets switched over uh, to the, the supplier, which is Direct Energy. They were the winning bidder out of four suppliers that bid for, uh, for the load here in, in Hadley. One of our objectives, obviously, is reduced electricity prices. We have to put in the caveat that savings cannot be guaranteed. That's a, that's a rule that the Department of uh, Public Utilities wants us to put in every time we mention the word savings. Uh, I can tell you historically of our, all of our aggregations here in Massachusetts have saved their residents money. All of our aggregations nationally have saved our, uh, our customers money. There is a renewable energy option that you see in the plan for those people who are very concerned about more renewable energy in the mix that you get. There's a 100% premium option, and to get into that, you would call direct energy. One thing about uh, the green programs that we put together, we deal with green consumers, uh, Green Energy Consumers Alliance out of Boston. They are the gold standard here in Massachusetts for supplying Massachusetts Class I renewable energy certificates. And what that means basically is they're the best, it's the best renewable energy uh, that's produced here in the Commonwealth and in uh, New England. Uh, there's no biomass included in that, for those of you who understand uh, more about green energy. And again, what, what these programs do, they protect you from some of these calls you get from unscrupulous suppliers, okay? What you never want to do, if you get a phone call and they say, oh, I, I need your account number to see if you qualify for the program, you never give out your account number. Okay, number one, never give out your account number because you'll get switched over without your knowledge. Probably the most popular question we get, why is it an opt-out program rather than an opt-in program? Okay, a lot of people are disturbed by the fact that it's opt-out. 
The short answer for that is because that's the way the law was written. And Massachusetts, <clears throat> Massachusetts had the first municipal aggregation law in the country. Every other successful aggregation law has been based on the Massachusetts law. Um, there's a very good reason why it's opt-out rather than opt-in. There's a very good business reason. Uh, that being, our supply, the suppliers that bid on our aggregations know that we're going to get 85% of the eligible load in a town, give or take one or two percentage points, so they know exactly what they're bidding on, okay, with an opt-out program. If it was opt-in, they wouldn't know whether they were getting 85%, 60%, 50%, 40%, and they wouldn't know what they were bidding on. And some of them wouldn't even bother bidding. For any of you who have been in business where you've had to bid and had to bid on specs, you realize you need quality and accurate specs to do a good bid. Same thing here in the energy industry. And essentially, uh, this is a very complex business. You know, when, when, we get, when, when we flip the switch and the lights go on, that's all we need to know. But in the background are all kinds of things going on, uh, trading energy, generating energy, okay, it's very complex. So these big suppliers have to know exactly what they're bidding on when they bid on a town's load. So essentially, that's the reason why it's opt-out rather than opt-in. Okay, how does your relationship with Eversource change? It doesn't change. You still get an Eversource bill. They continue to service the account, to um, service the infrastructure, uh, and you get one bill. Okay. For those of you who might have solar panels and you have a net metering agreement with Eversource, there's no impact on your agreement with Eversource. Um, you continue to, to have that agreement with them. You continue to get the market rate from Eversource uh, when you're selling electricity. And whatever, you don't, whatever you're not using from your solar panels, you get through the aggregation. If you're involved in a discount program, the discount program stays in place. Uh, that's not disturbed at all because, again, that comes from the distribution side of the bill, not the supply side of the bill. So there's no impact on discount programs. How do you know if you're benefiting from the program? Well, certainly, um, you see in the opt-out letter that the, that the rate for the aggregation is below the current Eversource rate, or actually the rate that Eversource starts July 1, which is uh, 9851 per kilowatt hour, okay? Uh, the aggregation for that first four months is 9746, so it's a little below. Certainly, you know the Eversource rates during the winter um, go up a bit. So we're going to maintain that, that rate, that 10.1 rate for the rest of the contract, and it, we're expecting it to be below the Eversource rate. Again, as I mentioned before, there's no termination fee or penalties if you want to get out of the program at any time. Uh, if you want to come back into the program, you can come back into the program. For those of you who might be on a competitive supplier now, when your contract ends, you can call the, uh, the supplier of the, pro of the program, which is direct, and you can come into the program. Or you can go to the website. We have a website that you can enroll that way. Or opt out. All right, this is what your Eversource bill looks like. You will continue to get the same bill. The only thing that changes is the name of the supplier right here under supplier. Everything else remains the same, and of course the price is going to be different. But everything else on the bill remains the same. Eversource continues to service the account. Uh, again, this is, this is the, the copy of the, uh, the customer notification letter that everybody on the basic service of Eversource received. If you didn't receive one, it's probably because you already have a competitive supplier. If you don't think you do, look on your bill and look for the name of the supplier in that spot on the, uh, on the Eversource bill. 
Hadley has a website. It's called HadleyCEA.com. Uh, it gives you all the information on the program. Uh, it gives you the ability to enroll, to opt up to 100% if you want. It gives you a calculator to find out how much your savings are, frequently asked questions, other news and information that comes up. There's an opt-out section and there's a contact section. Good Energy's number to call if you have questions is this number. This is Direct Energy's number uh, if you have questions from them. And again, all this information is on the website. This is my card. My phone number is a cell phone number that I'm, I'm up in the morning by 5. I'm out feeding my bears. And I usually don't get to sleep till about 11. So I'm available during that time. And my number, for anyone who wants it, is 413-548-0992. Okay, I'll open it up for questions. Who's got questions? Ma'am? A uh, question about suppliers. We always worry about cutoffs because of power outages. Uh, for low energy, you know, we're over, I'm not sure what the word is. Um, when we are overloaded uh, in terms of demand, mm -hmm. um, how do you vet the, the supplier that you, I mean, you're not the supplier, you're contracting to a supplier, as I understand it. So how do you, I mean, I want the electricity now. <laughs> I want them to have a, a plan for, you know, gauging the, the demand as we know it should be. And Eversource obviously does that very well, at least from my perspective. So how, how do you take care of that? Okay, New England, New England, the whole New England grid mm -hmm. is controlled by an organization called ISO New England. They're the independent service organization that controls the entire grid and the amount of electricity that's being generated and demanded in the grid. If you went to see their facility, which is, which is uh, you know, top secret, okay, it's down in Holyoke, you can't get in there unless you're one of them, okay? Their control room looks like something out of NASA, okay? They're continually looking at the amount of electricity being generated, the amount being demanded, and trying to balance that load, okay? Because right now, you can't save electricity. You have to generate the amount that's being demanded at the time, okay? They control all that, all right? Now, what direct energy does, they put a certain amount of energy into the grid, okay? To cover the load for Hadley, all right? You will never be in a situation where you won't have electricity, okay? Because essentially, the operational side of this is that the ISO runs this, for the utilities and for any other suppliers, you're always going to have electricity. It's not like, you know, ABC supply company goes out of business tomorrow, you won't have electricity. It doesn't happen. There's an operational side and a financial side, okay? The operational side always works. So you always get electricity. So you don't have to worry about who the supplier is, okay? Other questions, ma'am? I have a question about the rate. You were talking about the fact that the rate is not guaranteed. Does it ever go above Eversource? And if it does, how do we get that information to know whether we should be in or out? All right, you can see on the customer notification letter, um, for that first four months, it'll be 9746, okay? And then it goes up to 101, okay, for the rest of the contract. It'll stay at that rate. But how do we know what Eversource is for comparison? Well, Evers the Eversource rate is on here as well. Okay? That's for this four months. But yes. after this four months, how do we get that information? At the beginning of the year, there's a, there's a place on the website where you can check that. And that is going to be in, uh, updated on the website as well. So you can look at the website for that. Or you can go directly to Eversource. So we constantly have to keep checking to see whether your rate is lower or higher. You don't have to keep it. It happens every six months. And based on historical information, uh, you're going to see the air source rate go above our rate. Other questions? Ma'am? Can a household outside of the Hadley town participate in this program? 
Only those households within the boundaries of Hadley for this aggregation. Which, which, uh, which community are you talking about? Amherst. Amherst, okay. Amherst hasn't um, uh, gone out for aggregation yet. They've been studying it. Uh, they're talking about going out with uh, Northampton together for an aggregation, but they haven't gone anywhere with it yet. Other questions, sir? What's it going to save me? How much is it going to save me? Most of our aggregations are saving somewhere around 10, 12 percent. That's that's what we aim for, sir. After July one, how much will the rate go down? In other words, from whatever source is charging us to what you charge us. All right, per, the, the, rate, the rate here in, in, the, uh, in the letter is the rate for Eversource starting July 1. That's the, the 9851, and we're at 9746. So that's a tenth of a cent. It, for that first four months, it's that much. Then you're going to see the Eversource rates go up. Sir? Will there be any additional fees for infrastructure use of transmission services? No. No. No additional fees. This price stays the same uh, for their first four months, and it goes up uh, slightly for the next, uh, let's see, this is a 27-month contract. For the next 23 months, it goes to 10-1, okay? And it stays at that for that whole term. I'd be very interested in, in taking a look at the profit margin of Eversource versus Good Energy. Are your financial statements available somewhere? Uh, you can check our site, goodenergy.com. Does that mean yes or no? Well, you can check our site for that. Um, are you a publicly traded company? Well, no, we're not. We're a private partnership. Okay. And I assume you're, you're not non for profit, not for profit. We are for profit. Yes. 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 If uh, there's any discount to be given, why doesn't Eversource give them incentives? One, one of the advantages that uh, aggregations have is that we can go out to bid at different times of the year. Eversource is locked into two times of the year where they get a rate for 50% of their load for the next year. So they're always overlapping, but it, depending on the, they can go out in the market, it might be a bad market, they don't have a choice, they have to go out to bid. As long as they're following the correct process, DPU isn't concerned about the price, whereas we go out to bid at strategic times of the year, so we have an advantage that way. Sir. I'm already receiving green energy from the uh, Green Energy Alliance. Okay. Um, what advantages does your green energy have over theirs? And what's the difference in the rate between the dirty energy and the clean? Uh, well, cer certainly, if you look, did you get one of these? Yeah. No, you did. I think so. Okay. Uh, you can, if you just subtract the 9746, from the 12097, that's the that's the difference, okay. And um, do you know do you know Larry Cretion, who's with the Green Energy Consumers Alliance? Okay. All right. Um, they're going to be slightly cheaper with the aggregation than they are on an individual basis. You can call them and, and uh, verify that. Questions, ma'am. Why should we trust your company instead of other companies? Like, uh, I get letters once in every month or month Oh, Dominion. Why should we trust your company more than those people who are suppliers? Well, you can compare the rates of this program with the rates of any other uh, supplier who's active in Massachusetts. But why would you say we should trust you? Well, because we have a track record nationally. We have a track record in Massachusetts. As I said, we, we have 41 aggregations in municipalities with over a million people. And is that 41 aggregations including Hadley? Yes, it is. How long have you been in business? Uh, originally started in 2000. 
uh, as mostly a, uh, a commercial industrial energy broker. We also deal in, in natural gas in other areas of the country. Uh, we got into aggregation uh, in 2011. Other questions? I'm sure applications are in reverse, but you're having the, if you uh, uh, approve, you don't do anything. And if you disapprove, you will send it in to send your application in. Isn't that just the opposite? Well, again, that's the way the law is written. It's written as an opt-down rather than an opt-in. Okay. That, that's, that's the way the law is written. Well, you know, oddly enough, we do get phone calls from people who are disturbed by that, but then we also get phone calls from people who say, you know what, I like this because I don't have to do anything, and I understand the program, and I'm going to be in it, but I don't have to do anything. So we get, we get both pro and con on that. Other questions? Ma'am? Do you have any just general ideas on, you know, how much does the town have to say? I mean, part of this aggregate. I mean, that's obviously an indirect savings to us. If the town saves money, so is there some formula or whatever that you can the, the, the town with? The, the program goes through the town mm -hmm. because, again, that's the way the law is written. Mm -hmm. The rationale behind that, when the law was written, was the best organizing facility within any municipality is the municipal government. That's why it goes <laughs> through the town. The town does not benefit from this. It's only the residents and businesses. The town tax rate on the the town rate on electricity goes down like the residential, doesn't it? The town, what, what most municipalities do, okay, this is a residential program. Most municipalities have already gone out to bid for their municipal accounts because they're commercial accounts and they're different than the residential accounts. Okay. Sir? I currently have a different supplier than Eversource. Um, how will I find out if good energy is better than the one I have? Well, you can see that on your bill. You can see the rate under supplier. Do you have a rate there? I don't know because I haven't paid a bill in three months. <laughs> 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 I have sold it. Okay. Okay. That's why. Oh, yeah. All right, but do you see your do you see your rate there? No, I don't see a rate. Okay, so you, you you haven't paid a bill in three months because you have sold it. Yeah. Okay. Well that's great. That's great. And I probably won't pay for a few more months. Well that's good. That's good. Which 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 company are you with? Other it's this. What is this? Starion. Starion? Yeah. Okay. Check the rate. Compare it against the aggregation, and if you want, and if there's no termination fee, and you see this is a better rate, and I think it will be, you can come into the program. Okay. So, ma'am. What are the um, renewable energy sources other than biomass? Is this qualified Massachusetts Class One renewable energy sources? Is that just all solar? What is that? Mo most of most of the. Um, the Massachusetts Class 1 recs that we get from Green Energy Consumers Alliance are wind. In Massachusetts, uh, Rhode Island, uh, I believe there's one in Maine. Okay, we have some, so a little bit of solar in there and a little bit of anaerobic digestion. So there are wind farms in Massachusetts. What are the wind farms? Well, there aren't any, there are individual turbines around the Commonwealth. In Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and 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 mm -hmm. yes. So is is Vermont part of the this whole grid too? They're part they're part of the grid, but we don't we don't have any assets generating assets in, in Vermont. And how does the Eversource? They don't they don't have, they can't say that these things can't happen. I mean, it seems to me Eversource would not want these things this aggregate. Since, since divestiture back in 1998, the local utilities had to, had to divest themselves of all generation assets. Okay? Eversource makes no money on the supply, no matter where it comes from. Eversource only makes money on uh, maintaining the system, the infrastructure, billing, um, and delivering the electricity. 
They don't care where it comes from. It just seems like there's a lot of middle in here. Like you're good energy, but you're going through direct energy. And you know, it's well, we're, we're, the, we're, the, we're, the, we're the aggregation consultants that put this together. Direct energy is the one that won the bid. They're a generator, okay? And, and the town and the town residents and businesses are the, are the beneficiaries. When you say they're a... What did you just say? <laughs> the, ge the generator. Direct energy is the direct generator. Energy, yes. Meaning what? Meaning, Meaning they, they generate the electricity. Exactly. Through power plants, through... Yes. If I don't change this current supplier, will when the program begins, will I automatically be opt in? No, no. You didn't. You didn't get an opt in. I didn't get a notification letter. Only those who are eligible to be in the program are with basic service. So I need to leave this one to go to that one. That's correct. Yes. Will we be getting I have solar also, I have Vivint, and um, I'm wondering, do I have to opt out of this? I did get a letter. Okay. Uh, do I have to opt out of it if I want to stay with the Vivint, or do I? No, you're, you're going to get some of your electricity from the grid. Right. Okay. And, and that would be from the aggregation, and whatever your other uh, uh, contract is just is independent stays in place. I get those from over source too, but I haven't paid anything for more than three months. But that's that's great. I've had a credit for over a year. That's great. Miss How is this on there? Are we going to be getting two bills? No, no, one one bill. From Eversource? The only thing on your bill that changes is the name of the supplier right here in the supplier one. Everything else stays the same. Sir, um, you said that the green energy options are all from generated in Massachusetts. <coughs> yeah, Green Energy Consumers Alliance has assets in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Maine right now, and they're looking to develop more. Yes, so not necessarily in Massachusetts, but in the United States. <coughs> Did you know offhand if any of the solar energy is um, produced here by any more solar farms? They, they have. Um, Green Energy Consumers Alliance doesn't, doesn't have much in the way of solar. The reason being because you have uh, solar renewable energy credits that right now are priced at about uh, $250, whereas wind recs, those from, from wind generation, are about $25, $26. Okay, so you get the same benefit for about a tenth of the price by going with wind rather than going with, with solar. Sir? Yeah, on that bill, uh, there are two portions. Now, one is for electricity, and the other is delivery fees. I That's correct. I delivery what stays the same. Expect, or what would we expect to see happen with those fees? Those, fees. those are ever source. Ever those source. are ever source fees. So we're only we're only really dealing with the supply portion of the bill. Yes, sir. Listening to it, radio program recently, and. Uh, the speaker uh, terminated, he says, well, for the aggravation, uh, the, the few pennies you may make uh, or you may not, it's not worth the program. There are all kinds of opinions out there. You, you, could, you could talk to some of our clients who are very happy with our programs. Can you give me a telephone number again? Yeah, it's 413-548-0900. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, thank you very much for coming. And any questions you have, please call me. <laughs>